Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Stone Shard, shall we? Hey, hey, Distro, good evening, good to see you, my friend. Alright, well, here we are. Hey, Jonathan, good evening. Maranuba, hello. That's a good question, Jonathan. Um, I read the patch notes a bit. So Jonathan's asking about the fact that I'm playing Stone Shard and they just released a new patch, but I think it migrates your save file. I started a new game um, just to make sure, but I'll tell you how you can find out, Jonathan. Just boot up your save, uh, make sure your game is updated to the latest version, and open up your ability tree and scroll down and see if you have in the utility category armored combat this is the new skill tree that they added if you can see this then you are probably good to go hey jekyll what's up my friend good to see you so everybody um we are playing as jonathan just mentioned with stone shard 0.8.1 live which means uh, the new skill tree has a and some other things as well. They clarified a bunch of things in tool tips. Uh, they balanced some things. So I'm really just starting with a new character. And the video has already posted when I booted this up. I did that offline myself. If you want to see this character from the very beginning. Um, and yes. So here's what I am, Distro. This is a new character. And my my main character has died. Hey, hey, Leonard. Good to see you. Good evening. I am a Reaver. So, I don't know if I've done this background very much, if at all, but what's cool about this character is that um, Jorgrim gets the ability out of the gate to dual wield. So, I am using an axe in one hand currently and a sword in the other hand. So, you get to, like, try some more berserker, like, you know, offensive style combat. But then, of course, you know, I am always um, using my different weapon so I'm kind of uh, making sure that and there we go I've got my ranged weapon out so I'm very new with this character we're level two and we're about to start the first contract um, now that we've got level two so I'm going to go back to the town of Osbrook and get level two I am going to uncover this um, point of interest however so let's go doing that. I basically just did a bunch of the starter quests with this character. I've played the beginning so much that I can do this really rapidly. But as always, I'm playing on permadeath mode, which means uh, if we die, it's over. There's no saving it and uh, except save on exit. So I have to be careful and I don't want to just dive into it. So I really do like to have level two before I get into the first contract and we got there. I also did many of the easy quests in the first town just to get some items and money and experience. All right, now let me see here. Uh, it's up here is the point of interest. I'm going to stick on the road just in case there's some bad guys that I can take them down. But you're going to see that this dual wielding character is a lot of fun. It's interesting, um, you know, to not play with a shield. Oh, what's this? Hajald, false gods. So, this is actually um, like a shrine or something? Yeah, there's a roadside altar. This might be a new addition, or I just might not have seen one of these before. Hey, hot dog, good evening, my friend. Now, I can't interact with it. You see the gears, that means you can do something with it, but maybe you have to be a different character to use that? I'm not entirely sure, but that was the point of interest. So, now we, we know. I'm just going to use the middle mouse button. Kind of scroll down and uh, select the very bottom of the map and get out of here. We're thirsty. Not a problem. Now, this character, Armored Combat, from the patch notes, it said that this was a a set of skills that would benefit any kind of melee fighter. So I chose a two-handed fighter, 
Um, but unfortunately, he Jogram does not start out, um, or Jorgrim, with the ability to have this. So I need to find a, uh, a treatise on armored combat to be able to use it. Hey, Crispy, good evening. I'm so glad you're enjoying that, my friend. I keep meaning to play some more Dinkum. It's a really good game. The only issue I have uh, with Dinkum is that I'm terrible, and I keep getting killed by crocodiles. I should just ignore them, but I just can't help myself. Awesome, hot dog. This is Stone Shard. It's a fantasy RPG, open world, roguelike. And it's in early access, but it has a ton of content. I've played the game quite a bit on the channel. I've had some characters go really, really deep. I always play it in permadeath, so if we die, it's all over. But you don't have to play it on permadeath. You can play it um, in a more traditional RPG mode where you can just save the game if you want to make progress. But at this stage, there's a lot of the game that needs to be added. I think that might not be a bad idea, Crispy. The regular crocodiles, I can actually usually do, sometimes handle them. There was a... I can't remember what they're called in Dinkum. Maybe it was an alpha. There was like a quest to kill an elite kind of crocodile, and it was just too, too strong for me. I'm more of a search for treasure with my metal detector, catch butterflies kind of a person, not, you know, wrestle an alligator. Alright, so let's get back to Osbrook and pick up the contract. Whoa. Whoa. My shoes broke? Let me check this out. I can see in the message log it says peasant shoes broke. Indeed, they have broken. Wow, that's too bad. I mean, just from walking around. So I'm going to have to get these uh, repaired. Luckily, we're in the town. Let me see if I can find the... Uh, the cobbler. Probably not here right now. Yeah, everybody's leaving because it's nighttime, so I should just stop. And let's see what's in my inventory. I have a few things I can sell when it comes morning, but let's go to sleep. It's nighttime anyway. I'm pretty sure I paid for an entire uh, week. Yeah. Yeah. So I paid for a week this time just because I figure I'll be staying here for a while. So we'll sleep till 6 a.m. Get a really good night of rested sleep. 1,500 rested bonus. Going to go ahead and eat. And let's see. Do I have anything in here that seems great? Not really. I'm going to put this forgotten note, this quest item away. I don't think I need to carry two healing salves with me. And I probably don't need to have mead on me. Everything else I can attempt to sell. Hey, Aquanite, good to see you. Going great. How you doing? All right. New day here. Now we're going to plan on getting the contract and seeing where we have to go. How much? I have okay amount of food. I could get some more. Let me see. Let me, uh, let me sell that. And then can you, what can you repair? He can't repair anything of mine. Well, I mean, he could repair my weapons, but the durability isn't problematic yet. That's great, Aqua Knight. All right, let's go talk to Bert and sell some stuff. So we're going to sell him our chain. And... He won't even buy these herbs. What a jerk. All right, we'll put this over here. No problem. And I'm going to go try to get my shoes repaired. Or, to be honest, I could just buy a new pair of shoes. 
and just ignore the terrible shoes. How much money do I have? I have 548 crowns. Are you selling shoes? He is. So I could buy some boots. These boots are actually pretty cheap. They're 187. They offer three protections. So they're just way better. These boots are more expensive, but they offer a little bit of better resists, better protection. I'm not going to spend a lot. I'll buy these riding boots, and I'll sell these. And there we go. Hey, Stanislaw, good evening. Good to see you. All right, so we have our boot situation fixed up. Our armor isn't great. Um, in fact, it's terrible. Can I buy... I mean, this is better. Can I afford this? This is for protection, better physical resistance, better dodge chance, less bleed resistance, and less frost resistance. But frost resistance isn't really that big of a deal. I could buy this. It would take like pretty much all of my money, but I am actually going to do this. Um, I'm going to sell him that. There we go. Got some new gear. All right, so we've upgraded our defensive capabilities just a little bit. I have enough food and, and water, and I've paid for the inn. Actually, wait, let me drink and then uh, collect water, fill up my little canteen here. And I've paid for the inn for a week, so even though I'm low on money, this should be no problem. And let's go talk to the elder and get the quest. What's up, dude? Uh, you any got any contracts? Fugitive's hand. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you got a deal. Um, and tell me the rumors. Okay, okay. Um, walk away. Let me look on the map. Where is this? It's up here. Okay, so we already actually uncovered Castle Runfrost. So we're good. Or Runfrost, I should say. So I am all set. Let me go over this way. And, uh just uncover this on the map I don't have a ton of food but I did just eat this morning I have two pieces some berries and I should be able to find food in the dungeon if it's a real emergency I'd rather do that and save the crowns than um, you know spend all my money right now if I can avoid it now I am searching I don't want to get bit by snakes I don't know if they've changed that at all but it's pretty much uh, a horrifying experience if the snakes come out of the bushes and get you so let's just stick on the road okay and I'm going to just use the mouse wheel to move the map all the way up here. Run straight north on this road to get to the castle. We have about a 1,100 turns of vigor. This is the well-rested buff when you rest for a, you know a decent amount of time. You're going to get a bunch of extra energy, extra experience. It's really good. Yes, hot dog, that's a great question. So time is passing every time you move. This is a traditional roguelike in the sense that nothing happens in the game when you're not moving. Now, it's beautifully animated, so like you see these butterflies moving around, but they aren't actually indicative of time. The enemies will not move unless I move. Everybody moves when you move kind of a thing, so you can stand still and contemplate your moves, and time is not moving. But as soon as I start moving, every tile that I advance is passing time. Or you can actually just wait in place and pass time if you'd like. You can push R to rest and sleep and recover your health faster. All right, so we're going to come down here. There's going to be enemies guarding the entrance to this, as there usually are. I'm going to push W to switch to my crossbow. And let's see if we can find a bunch of dolt guarding the fireplace here we go 
Speaking of adult, we'll just wait until he gets into range and try to shoot him. Oh boy, here he comes. All right, I got to switch over to my weapons. Now, I'm using, I'm dual wielding, and I have a couple of abilities that are awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and do Flurry of Strikes. And you see that we just hit this guy a ton. He used a huge attack on us, but luckily he missed. And now we're going to use our other ability on him. And he should be dead. He's at 38% health. Yeah, he's getting... He's a tough guy. Oh! So, part of what happens when you dual wield is, like, you attack, and then you attack with your offhand. Now, what happened is, um, I attacked him twice, okay? You can look at the combat log and uh, see this further. Let me see if I can actually expand this. I can't remember if uh, you can look at that in greater detail. Anyway... Um, I attacked him twice, and then he decided to try to run away. And as he was moving away, he was fleeing for his life. When you leave someone's threatened area, you or the enemy, you generally provoke an attack of opportunity, not all the time, but most of the time. And he did, and then when he was trying to run, I got a critical hit on him. And you can see, like, I, you know, chopped him up into pieces. So that's, uh, that's good. He dropped a war scythe, which is like a giant two-handed sword. Now, I'm not going to pick up any of this stuff except for my ammunition. There's two enemies up here. I'm going to switch over. I'm going to fire. I really want to just try to hit somebody once. There we go. I'm going to use this ability. Okay. Good. He's dead. And we can step back. I'm stepping back. This guy right here is going to come into combat. But you'll notice that like my cut through attack has six turns of cooldown left. So I like to just walk people back. Um, oh. And he, he actually hit me there, unfortunately. And now I can just use like this. Here we go. All right. Um, and we hit him. All right, let's see, how is he doing? 62%, okay. So we're just gonna do regular attacks on this guy. Now we got a, um, a perk for our mood where we became heroic. We're doing 15% extra damage. We counter better, we take less damage, we have higher magic power, it's great. I'm gonna use this ability called Cut Through and we just chopped the guy apart. And as you see, this game is hilarious. It's very cartoony and pretty to look at, but then it gets real gruesome with the um, combat fatalities. All right, so let's go ahead and just holding down Alt to reveal the, the treasure. And we're going to pick up these bolts. Now, items will never despawn really in this game. Um, so you can leave all this loot out here and just come get it later. You do not want to get it when you're going into the dungeon. Ooh, that's a... Oh, darn. It's a dog pelt. I mean, who, skin, who skins a dog? What kind of monster are you? Um, all right. So these are like some cheap items that we can sell. This is fine, but we're not going to do it right now. Yeah, this game is great. Hot dog. And they just keep adding stuff to it. Granted, it's been in development for several years, but at this stage, it's, it's getting better and better. I'm going to rest. All right. Now, we're down some max health because we've got a little bit of an injury to our head and torso, but that's not that big of a deal. I'm going to go in. Now, this is the uh, castle. This is instanced, so you can come and go, but when the contract's over, um, everything that was inside here will alter, um, reset, or change. So you can't leave items in here. This is the like this is food like I was talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and just eat this. You can always just check your hunger right here. I'm at 16% hunger, 13% thirst. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and eat these berries. They're gonna spoil anyway. 
and our morale is dipping a little bit uh, this will make us thirsty yeah this is good let's just use this on our uh, head I guess why not I'll leave the lettuce there I'm gonna get a drink from barrel so this is very nice to find food and water right by the door you don't always see that um, it, it's a lot like that Aquanite it, it's like um, it's like Terraria in some ways but it's nice that it's turn-based because um, what kills me about Terraria is that I'm just bad at the combat in that game and it's real time and I always want to stop and just look around and like plan my house and dig and there's just enemies all over I'm gonna push one to search for traps you always want to do this this is why because we start right into the kitchen uh, so this is a nice little entry point there's some more food here I'm not gonna take anything we can always come back here and get it uh, there's an onion so let's open this door and let's look I'm gonna search for traps no traps I'm gonna switch over to my ranged weapon push um, zero to reload it and let's see there's an enemy he says he sees it so I'm, I don't know where it is it's got to be over here so I'm gonna just back up and let it come to me I guess well you said you saw an enemy oh they're over here they just didn't see us okay Let's see if this guy will see us eventually. And he's still out of range. Here we go. Now we could try to shoot him. Reload. Shoot. Reload. Switch to our weapons. He's on us. Double strike. Um. Alright. He bandaged, which is annoying. Now he's dead. I said... Hugelsing, which I'm not pronouncing that right, and I don't know what it means, but you know, it sounds good. Is your perception different based on class? That's a good question. I It's actually based on you have a st perception stat. Now, I don't know, though, how that affects um, I haven't um, Aqua Knight, but I really want to. Is it good? But perception in this game doesn't affect your trap seeking ability yet they might put that in later but right now when you examine surroundings it will anything within the range of that ability will automatically be detected with 100 percent accuracy so as long as you're using that you will find all traps now you won't be guaranteed that you can dis uh, like disable all traps but you can definitely see them okay that was a huge hit right there Ouch, yeah. He, if they hit with that two-handed attack, we're in bad shape, but... Oof. This is getting rough. We got our second win, mercifully, but... Yeah, this guy's... I mean, this guy's tough. Like, we hit this guy for 21 with an arrow, this enforcer, and then we used all of our abilities, and he's still just standing here. Okay, now he's dead. But boy, that was a, a difficult fight. That's great, Aquanite. I can't wait to see it then. Alright, so we got some money. I'm going to go backward, though. And before I fight, there's a closed door over here. I'm going to keep it closed. And I'm actually going to go in here, and I'll close the door up. And we're just going to rest and, and try to get ourselves back together. We took a lot of damage right there. I don't have a shield. My armor isn't great. So things are a little bit dicey early on. I'd, I'd like some better weapons and such, but we'll get there. I think one more active ability would also be amazing in combat. Um, this is a cooked carp. I'll just eat it. It doesn't keep very long. Alright. Take the money. Okay, I'm going to close this up. I'm actually going to drop this flail. These weapons in this game, unless they've changed it, sell terribly. They sell for just about nothing. There's like there was a war recently um, in the story of the game, so there's a surplus of like badly made weapons. So you hardly get any money at all for that stuff. You're better than ooh, here's gloves. Um, these are better than my gloves in every way. So we will equip them and be happy about it. And let's go break this up, break this, break that up. <laughs> 
And we found a rag, which, okay. Check these barrels, and there's some food inside. I'll take it. All right, let's keep exploring, searching for traps, and there's nothing else in this room unless, you know, there's a secret or something. Let's, we can just go around here and look. Nope, nothing. All right, I'm going to go over this way, and this door, let's just check it out, look for traps, make sure we're good, open it, traps, we got a bookshelf. Ooh, here's the uh, two-handed sword treaties. Okay, you can always read these. And you learn all of the abilities and you get experience if you haven't read it before. And you could sell these. So these are just, whenever you find a book, it's usually fantastic. Skill books are or, or, uh, just so great. Hey, Richard, what's up, my friend? Well, if you can get 25 gold for it, that is worth it. In my experience, I get like nothing. But maybe they've changed the prices. Hey, thanks, Aqua Knight. Good luck with your finals, my friend. Yep, it's that time of year, isn't it? All right, I got to try to pick this lock. And I do have some lock picks in my inventory, so we'll just kind of um, right-click on this and pick it. And pick it. We got it. Ooh, there's an axe over here. All right, and there's a trap down here. I think that guy might have already found it and got killed by it. Sometimes you'll see that the enemies will actually get killed by the uh, the traps that are already here. So you just say thank you for finding that. Got a little money. And there's a spool of thread. See, the spool of thread sells for 40 Whereas this big axe right here, it says it sells for 150 But when I take it into town, they might give me 15 which is... Not bad, but for its size, it's not great. All right, but this is locked. Let me search for traps, and let's pick the lock. Here we go. All right, there's this dude who is the enforcer. He looks really angry, and we're just going to walk him back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my crossbow, uh, load it, and there's two enemies in here. I don't want both. That makes sense, Richard. I mean, you definitely can. I used to do it. And then I realized that, like, the smaller stuff just didn't cl clog up my inventory and sold better. So here's the uh, the boss, Ram the Parasite. Uh, we got to him really fast. Usually, this dungeon is a little bit larger. Uh, but, boy, there he is. So I need to walk him back. I don't want to fight two of them at once so I'm really hoping that Ram will lose interest and I can just fight this guy by himself uh, that's not happening unfortunately oh god he had that ability I forgot that they had that all right I gotta get out of here he he cut me look at my health he critically hit me for 27 damage um, and I'm bleeding. This might be like we die, actually. Oh, yeah, and I'm going up into a... I didn't go to the right. Okay, so unfortunately... Well, I don't need the bandages anymore. The reason I didn't use bandages is because I didn't want to pass any turns. And I need to be far enough away... But the unfortunate thing is, I'm going to go out, and I can leave, right? But unless they changed it, those enemies will stand by that doorway forever. 